So this week we are going to start um, a two week unit on responsive web design. And so far you guys have worked with Flexbox, which is a responsive layout. And what you're going to be learning uh, this week is a little bit more about uh, responsive sizing and another layout called grid view. So you are going to want to take a look at the readings because uh, that'll give you some nice background information. And then you're going to want to go into uh, the lecture demo. And this is a you know two-part series <laughs> on uh, responsive design. And once you come in here, uh, we talk a little bit about what responsive design is, what a viewport is, and then uh, we get into responsive lengths. And um, some of you have tried using EM for widths and heights, and that is only supposed to be used for font size. So pay particular attention to uh, things that are used for font size versus element width. Okay, um, And if you aren't sure if something is for an element's width or not, the safest thing to use is a percentage. So as you go through here, uh, you're going to learn some general information about responsive design, and then we're going to get into the grid view layout. Okay. And once you get done working through that, you're going to work on the textbook assignment where you're going to be applying that grid view layout. And the Acme vertical folder from last week, you are going to copy that into your lesson 11 folder. You're going to open up the CSS file and you will be adding uh, CSS to create a responsive site. So all of the highlighted text here is what you need to add. Then you are going to have to edit all of the HTML pages. And there is more than one. So uh, this is a little list of the pages that you're going to have to add these classes to. And then here is another little list that you are going to be adding classes to. Um, you're going to keep those pages open because at the top of every single page, you've got to add this meta tag. Uh, once you're done with that, you're going to download um, the Zen Spa site. It is a fictional spa, totally made up. <laughs> and then you are going to be adding CSS to create a responsive site. Okay. And once you've got the CSS, then you are going to have to go into the different pages. Okay. And it instructs you which page to go into. And you're going to have to apply the columns because that is how you implement grid view. Okay. And you'll notice that down here, we're changing the width of uh, a graphic. We're setting a maximum width, which sometimes you will do. Um, normally in responsive, we don't use pixels, but 200 pixels is small enough so that you could view it on a mobile phone. Um, so as we go through here, uh, task four, you're going to be taking the Zen Spa and making it printer friendly, which means you're going to have to create another style sheet for printing. And that is uh, activated when you press control and the letter P. That takes you into print preview. And that is when the print style sheet is used. Okay, so you'll have to create the style sheet. And then you'll have to add a link for it into the heading section of your HTML. And you're going to want to put this link below the regular style sheet link. And once you're done with that, we're going to do yet another change to the Zen pages. And this is for um, basically SEO. We're going to be adding meta uh, tags with a description and keywords. Then we are going to take the keywords and add them into our alt text. Uh, you want to get those keywords in the page as many times as you can. So if you can put them in headings or you can name images using your keywords or you can put them in alt tags, uh, that just helps the search engines 
find that page when you do a search on those keywords. Okay, and so you'll notice that we're adding different meta tags, a uh, little different description to some of the pages. Uh, then uh, to simulate a mobile device, um, you can actually use the simulator in Chrome. It's not perfect, okay, but you have to go into the developer panel by pressing F12. And then it's this little symbol here and that will simulate a mobile phone. And it'll tell you the phone up here and you can actually click and select a different one. Or you can go into edit and then you can turn on whatever devices you want to check. And so it, it's a nice feature, it's not perfect, okay? but it will give you an idea of what your page is going to look like uh, when you view it in mobile. And then to turn it off, you just click on the, the little button and you can close out your panel. Once you are done with that, uh, you are going to transfer the Acme vertical uh, site and the Zen site uh, to the web and then add those links to your assignment page. Uh, the lab assignment, you're going to create your own grid view page. Uh, and I do have an example that you can look at. Okay. And so this is responsive. So if I go in and I turn this on, you can see that it does look different in mobile. And if I do an iPad, you can see that it changes again. Uh, the desktop and the iPad, I believe, are pretty much the same. So uh, the desktop version is just a little bit bigger. Okay, so um, that is an example. And you can certainly do it on whatever topic that you want. Uh, here are some minimal requirements for your HTML. And then I've also got requirements for the regular CSS, which I'm calling screen and the print CSS, which you know, you're gonna get by pressing Control and P. Uh, and then you can add the links to your assignment page and get everything transferred. The project that you create this week and next week can be used as a foundation for your term project. A lot of the same requirements that are in here are in your term project. So make sure that you do something um, that you really like, okay? <laughs> because um, next week you'll be using a little different layout, but the content that you use here, you can actually use in the other layout as well. So if you take a little time on the content this week, uh, you will be able to reuse it and if you want to use it as part of your term project, you can. So I just wanted to show you another example of something you could do for your final project as well. And so, um, you know, you're not limited, you know, to uh, the other example. Uh, it's totally up to you what you do your term project on. Okay, it just needs to be responsive. And, you know, if I resize this, you can see that it is. In fact, I go from four columns down to two. Okay, so you can kind of get a feel for uh, different types of projects that you can do. Uh, and really the sky's the limit because all you need to do is meet those minimal requirements. Um, if you run into problems or if you have questions, please let me know. Uh, but that is basically what you are going to be working on this week. Now at the top of the course, you may have noticed that we do have extra credit. Um, the CIT department assesses critical thinking and uh, there is a test called the test of everyday reasoning with numeracy. 
uh, that students take one time a year. You only have to take it once. And once you take that test, you just submit done. So if you took it in the fall, go ahead and submit done and you'll get your extra credit. If, if you have not taken it this year, this school year, um, then check your email because you will see an email with the subject uh, TERN, username and password. Uh, that email contains the information you need to take this test. And for most students, it takes, you know, 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and once you complete the test, you just submit done. And if you have multiple classes with me, you will see this Dropbox at the top of every class. Go ahead and submit done because you will get extra credit in each class.